Well, welcome again. Uh, in this tax tip series that I've been creating to hopefully prepare as many people out there, whether you're a you know business owner uh, or like say you own a business through like a you know some sort of C corporation or an S corporation doesn't matter. Some way somehow we all have some sort of uh, you know vehicle expenses, right? Um, so this one's the questions that I get asked a lot, and one of the things is, hey, Liz. I mean, what's really better for me? I mean, should I be, you know, expensing now my actual expenses or my business car mileage? And it's a great valid question. It really is. And the answer is not a clear yes or no. It depends. It depends. And the reason for that, because a lot of times, uh, you know, it's easier to handle the mileage, okay? that it is the actual expenses. And why I say that? Because a lot of times when you do the mileage, right? As long as you're keeping, hopefully tracking <laughs> those mileage that you're using strictly for business, okay? So I wanna be very clear about this. Um, a lot of times people make mistakes that they're traveling in between and then doing stops and they're like, well, you know, the IRS is not gonna find out. You know, I would say play safe instead of being sorry, right? Because the reality is that sometimes you can get, you know, in an iffy situation that it's just not worth it. I, I don't know. I always think like that. Listen, there's plenty of loopholes and tax deductions and write-offs that you can do. Just go along and, you know, follow the guidance and you shouldn't have any issues, right? So let's go ahead and uh, clarify which one. Hmm, might be right for you, okay? So the first thing, if you want something really simple and you're gonna say, gosh, you know what? I, I'm really not good with, you know, keeping track of all my receipts and everything. Let's go ahead and, and, and do the mileage. Perfect, all right. This recording is as the end of 2022. Um, and what the IRS did offer, and I'm sure here on my screen, as you can see, which is best business core mileage or actual expenses. And, they were a little more generous this year because, as we know, gas pricing, you know, went skyrocket, right? I mean, I know some states like in California and places, you know, like, uh, you know, California, I think it was Arizona, more in the west side of the United States. I mean, prices went as high as, you know, $7 a gallon, $8. Um and especially, you know, then it started dropping, luckily, but I mean, it's still high, no matter what, to how it was prior to COVID. I mean, definitely, I mean, the pricing was way more affordable. So anyhow, they decided that in 2022, any miles that you drove, which is kind of tricky, by the way, any miles that you drove between January 1st all the way to June 30th, you will only get 58 cents and a half. Don't ask me why they go with that half. So I'm just going to round it down to 58 cents, okay, per mile. Now, because again, as I explained a little bit earlier, the price of gas went so skyrocket, they decided, okay, we need to make it up. And what they did was they did an increase of four cents. So it's now 62 now. So any miles from July to December 31st, it's 62 cents, okay? So... That will help a little bit. Now, keep in mind that when you take the mileage, the best thing is to have some sort of, you know, app on your smartphone, right? Something that's going to keep track of all your miles, okay? Um, I know now in these days, people don't want to use, you know, uh, you know, probably, a, you know, a notebook or anything like that. Anyhow, it would be too too complex, right? So if you have, a, you know, iPhone or Android, doesn't matter. A lot of these apps, the majority are free. Others, you have to pay a small, you know, um, fee monthly. Um, but the ones that I would suggest based on, again, in, in, in what my clients have been using, and it seems like it's working good for them, they're satisfied. It's actually called, bringing them highlighting, it's called, Everland Stride, I know it's good for iPhones, by the way, Stride, they use a lot of iPhone uh, users, they usually have that app, and then also Trip Log, okay, so you got Everland, so you got Stride and Trip Log, uh, the choice is yours, I always tell people just try, uh, you know, try them all, I mean, see which one you feel, you know, it's easier for you, right, so the other thing that I want to discuss is in this uh, video is what happens 
with tolls and also parking, right? Those kind of are considered extra expenses on top of the mileage, okay? So again, mileage is where you're, if you get to choose that option versus to the actual expenses method, then you are still entitled. Again, I repeat myself, you are entitled to actually tag your parking, your tolls, okay? That's additional. Okay, on top of the mileage. Now, obviously, we have what's considered a second option, which is the actual expense. Now, actual expense, as you can see, here's where you're tracking, you know, again, your gas, your repairs, your tires, your insurance, your registration fees. Okay, all these kind of things. Okay, the lease payments. Okay, your car payments. All that will go under the second option, which is called actual expenses. Again, remember when you own a vehicle, whether it's a truck, whatever might be the situation, okay, then that vehicle is considered a business expense. So you're entitled to also take the insurance if you're using the actual expense. You are entitled to take, you know, the repair costs, okay? Now, no mix and mingling. No, it's not like, you know, you decide, well, maybe I can do both. No, <laughs> it's not possible. So, therefore, you have to choose which one is best for you. Now, normally, I suggest that maybe starting with the mileage, like I said, it's the most simple thing that you can do. And then from there, if you decide by the following year you want to switch, that's fine. Now, I want to bring up something that I think is really important. And is that when you're leasing a car, you cannot depreciate it because that's something else that you can do when you own the vehicle, okay? You can do a depreciation, all right? And that's important because if you have especially a new car, you know, there's so many incentives right now. By the way, I'm also creating a separate video. Like I said, it's going to be called this series, the tax tip series, where I'm really trying to... I guess give as much information in a digestible, you know, uh, small pieces um, instead of creating long videos, you know, uh, making shorter. I think we all are crunching, you know, time here and I want to make it again as easy as possible. So again, it's a choice that you have to make it something that maybe, you know, you want to discuss with your tax preparer, you know, or perhaps your CPA. Uh, you know, I want to make it comparable. I do that sometimes. You know, sometimes I, I I have had clients where they kept track, all right, of all their mileage. And then when I was ready to file their return and give them, you know, tax advisory, which is part of what I normally like to do, I believe to be a very proactive tax accountant. And what I do is not only do preparation, because I think I defeat and I serve my clients if I don't provide them with tax planning and really a projection of what's going to be more beneficial for them, okay? And how they can legally, legally reduce their taxes because anyhow, that's what the deduction write-offs and credits are available for you to utilize them. There's nothing wrong with them as long as you do it the right way, okay? Which means their way <laughs> to the IRS. So again, a lot of times what I do is like, for example, let's say that my client has been keeping track of the mileage. And then as we starting to do the return, we make a review and then I make it comparable. Sure. And I say, hey, give me uh, all your receipts about your gas, right? And uh, the insurance and how many repairs you've done. So what happens a lot of times could be that if the, vehicle is older, the repairs will be more excessive than the mileage that you can really deduct, okay? So that's something that uh, I think a good, uh, you know, CPA or tax professional hopefully would do for you um, to make it comparable about which one's going to be more beneficial, okay? Now, again, remember, we do have a lot of depreciation and extra bonuses that you can take advantage. I'm creating a separate video on that. Like I said, I'm trying to just give, uh, you know, small, I call it nutshells of tax tips um, to make it as easy and as digestible as possible. Um, and, and I think hopefully that I'm, I'm coming across that message to you. So again, it's all about your choice. But remember, either one, you're still entitled for your tolls and your parking. Okay, and please do not deduct anything like a, 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 a car ticket. If you were in high speed 
or perhaps you unfortunately got you, you know, with DUI or any other type of a situation like that, those are not deductible, okay? They're not. Uh, even if you were in a business trip, they're still not considered, um, you know, business uh, deductible, okay? Or, or as we call it, a write-off, which is the same thing, by the way. So Nia, I hope this information has been helpful. And again, like I said, in the next other video I'm gonna be doing, um, that would discuss a little bit more what other possible is called um, how to depreciate uh, business assets. And not only we're going to talk about vehicles, but we also I'm going to be mentioning about other furniture and what kind of other equipment and computers and what's going to be even better for you um, to utilize because there is a, a downside to that. Um, and I'm going to share that in that video with you. Okay. Again, this is Liz Story. I hope you like and share and, and subscribe to my channel. It does help you know, with the algorithm and it helps to obviously uh, increase my, my traffic. So I now appreciate your support and I will be seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.